but I hope all of you that are there and are watching from your enjoy the amazing stream and the cruise that we're gonna have right now. Uh, you told me the draft is already done, so there we have it the captains, Team Gat and Team Siski. Yeah, it looks like maybe they're starting with Anki versus Gluttony, if that's what that image is insinuating to me right now. It's seven versus seven. Yes, Team Gact versus Team Siski. We did the draft, and we've got a very interesting lineup. So one thing to note about this entire crew battle is that there are no shared mains across the entire crew battle. Every single person plays a different character. And so right now we're starting with two very unique solo mains between Pikachu and Wario. Okay, and there we have it. Oh, uh, are, we, are we losing a little bit of connection or is it my Wi-Fi right now? We lose a little bit of the connection every once in a while. It just comes from the feed that they're yeah. sending us from Mazatlan. So we'll deal with that as we can. There's going to be some blinking in and out and there might not be a whole lot of game audio uh, as of right now, but we still get to see the games live and you get some English commentary. And that's really all that we can hope for, at least for, for my side in the U.S. Yeah, so don't worry, guys. We will do what we can. We will do our best right now, as Glutony is doing already 103% on Mark and Shiny Mark's side, already trying to close out that stock. Remember that we're playing Cruise. So if Glutony loses a stock, they're going to start with two stocks on the next match. And that, that goes for Shiny Mark, too. If he wins with only one stock, he will only have one stock for the rest of his run right now. Yes, uh, the meta for crew battles is slightly different, not necessarily from character to character, but from play style. How you choose to play it out is going to differ in crews, specifically because you're trying to save as many stocks as possible. It's not so much about can I beat my opponent, it's how hard can I beat my opponent. So yeah, obviously exactly. winning is the, is the start to that, but how hard can you win is really the focus. Yeah, because we've seen some crazy comebacks with one stock before. Uh, I remember actually the cruise who that happened in Smash Factor. I think Shiny Mark actually did a run like that with only one stock. He won the entire crew battle over there. So yeah, shout out to Shiny Mark. Right now he's struggling a little bit against Glutony. Gluter still has three stocks and there we have it. I think that's mid WAP on deck right now. So Shiny Mark needs to be really careful because obviously right now Gluter can afford to do that WAP. Absolutely, and Waft coming out for stock two actually might be feasible. I think that would be definitely something that Gluto should look for. If you can close out an early second stock on Pikachu, it's getting less early as light as Pikachu is, I think he is gonna hold it. But closing out that stock is invaluable regardless in Cruise. You never know how the tables can turn in the middle of this set. So I still think he is gonna hold the Waft for the last one and the corkscrew out of shield. Obviously not a lot of knockback on that, but keeping that stage control is crucial at 121% on Wario. Yeah, definitely. I think this is going to be so good. And Shiny Mark misses that punish and that cost him his second stock. He's working with one stock already. The team gag, it's on the loose right now. But yeah, remember, Pikachu is one of the best characters in the game. And Shiny Mark right now is considered the best Pikachu in the world. I was not sure what was happening right there because of the parts of the motorcycle that are yellow too. I thought Shiny Mark might have his D. And just to clarify for you and for our audience's sake, this is actually Anki from France, not Shiny Mark. So still one of the best Pikachus oh, in the world. Is it not uh, Shiny Mark? No, no, this is Anki from France. So we actually have I... both of the French players in the draft right now playing against each other. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I must I must look very silly right now. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. A lot of your points are still, still valid. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember, like... I don't know, maybe it was like a Mandela effect right now, but I swear to God that I saw Shiny Mark on the names. But yeah, Anki, I mean, Anki is an amazing player, one of the best Pikachus in Europe already. So yeah, he's working his way off right now, trying to close out Gluto's second set. Remember that Gluto still has Waft on deck. So this could mean a bit of trouble for Anki. Yeah, I imagine that he's going to hold the Waft until he can punish maybe a quick attack recovery off the edge. The crawling at the ledge is... Uh... A little bad. Oh, he, he tried to bait out Anki, but you know, either way, he closed out the stock and, and going into the second player in the crew battle with two stocks instead of one is massive. Anki's got to be kicking himself for not being able to take that second stock even. That was so close. That was actually so close, and I, I actually like the baiting from Glutony right there, just trying to mess him with Anki's head over there, like I'm just crawling over here. If you want, get close. If you can't, because I'm going to waft you out the second you get close to me. Yep, and 
we have. Oh, that's that's why I got confused because Shiny Mark is actually on the crew. So I just my, my brain just associated Pikachu with Shiny Mark. So yeah, that's totally oh, my B chat. I'm so sorry. But yeah, Enki just took out one of Glutonis stuck team. Siski is on the lead right now, and Gluto starts with two stocks right now in this second game. So I uh when oh, we before we did this draft. The person that was actually supposed to be in Shiny Mark's place, I believe, was Alindis. Uh, and he, I assume, couldn't make it or dropped out or they couldn't find him. So Shiny Mark subbed in. So instead of there being no combined mains across all of the players, Pikachu actually shows up twice. But everybody else is unique. You can see on the left side, you've got what, Ness, whatever MKLeo chooses to play. Pikachu is out. Rob, the Belmonts, Terry, or other FGC players. Oh, Mustaine is also a, a, a sub-in. Oh, for, I that for, who that's for. But uh, yeah, that, that's a sub-in. That's, that's two Terry's over there. Oh, Jazar. Staying. Jazar was supposed to be playing. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but I oh, guess Jazar. Me, Jazar. Me papa. Jazar got this with that Dr. Mario. I mean, wow, amazing. I, mean, I don't know how, how does he pulls it off, but one of the best Dr. Marios in the world, if I could say that. Yep. Unfortunately, couldn't be here for this crew battle, but that's okay. Having Mustang sub in is also just as much of a treat, and that makes, by the way, two double main matchups because Terry is showing up twice. And in fact, Terry is showing up right now against Gluto. We have, I think, Andres FN is showing up on stream to try to take out Gluto's two stocks and hopefully lose very few in the process. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to be having Andres FN versus Glutti. I Yeah, they played before. They definitely played before. But I think this is, if not the first time, they played against each other in a crew, probably the second time. So yeah, we're going to be seeing what Andres... And actually, Andres was really, really on point with his spikes back in a Smash Factor. So let's see if there is still on point right now we're starting to remember gluto had to take one stock because anki actually took one stock almost taking out two stock but yeah let's start with a small battlefield right now gluto just trying to apply some more pressure with the combos the bread and butter from where you got it but andres fortnite oh damn i i, I promised myself i wouldn't call him andres fortnite once again but i'm sorry i'm so sorry please, please don't mock me that's great. Now, what's interesting in this matchup is that in the scramble situations, Gluto is going for a lot of these short hop aerials. But whenever they reset neutral and stage position gets reset, uh, Gluto is going for a lot of full hop aerials because he knows oh. that he can get caught, caught by crack shoot or burning knuckle. But look at that, already evening out the stocks, and now it's just a, it's a full player up with three stocks advantage uh, from the side of, of Gluto on that team. Yeah, already working with that. Well, we can call it a three stock lead. Just to call it like that, but it's more like three stock share between two players. 88 already for Gluten. And remember that Wario still has Waft on deck. It's not already ready. It's not ready, but he has that option so he can close out the second stock from Andres or even the last one. So Andres needs to pull something off right now, trying to close Gluter's stock as soon as possible. But nice edge guard coming out from Gluter. You're supplying so much pressure right now. He he doesn't let Andres Fern and regain control of the stage. Yeah, Glutony is making this look pretty easy. He's making it look like a very difficult matchup for Terry because at all of those mid-range and even scramble ranges, Gluto is choosing really great options against Andres. I don't know how he's going to come back from this. He's got to try to make some sort of closure off of this ledge trap. I don't know if he's going to be able to. Gluto seems like he's got stage positioning back. And suddenly, you know, it, it back to scramble, back to neutral. Yeah, back to neutral. And, and what I like is that Gluto has been managing to take out Andres' stocks before the gold meter goes out so yeah that's one crucial point right now this is where andres needs to be careful and the downer misses by a hair right there andres has another chance of bringing this back even though his crew is already uh down and down on two stocks but there's a character and a player that can definitely turn the tables right now is andres Yes, and speak of the devil and they shall appear. Go is online. I'm assuming Andres has got to start throwing out some power geysers or something because if you don't, you're just going to get up smashed and your stock is gone. You no longer have go meter. And so what is your best hope right now is killing Gluto and your team is still down two full stocks. You made very little progress for your team. Obviously, you didn't make any loss of progress, but if you lose your stock here, it's going to be an uphill battle for the rest of Team Gaft. 
Yeah, that's one of his best options right now, just trying to close out a stock because with with Wario with Waft on deck, it can be really, really complicated for Andres right now. But oh nice conversion from there's just throwing out Gluto. He's repeating the thing that Gluto was doing to himself uh, back with the last stock. Oh my god, that was such a risky move right there. He had that was greedy, that was definitely greedy. They are B just to try to get off some pressure right there. 62% already. He is in kill percentage for the WAF right now. Absolutely in kill percentage, but not, I don't believe, in combo percentage for the WAF anymore. So Gluttony is going to have to find something more like a hard read, or he could probably catch a rising tackle recovery. Oh my goodness, but what? he just gets burning knuckled to the face. No go, nothing needed there. That was just a hard call out from Andres. Great stuff really keeping his team in line with where he started when he was there. So now it's a matter of with the one stock you have, can you take out whoever Team Siski decides to send in next? If you're Team Siski right now, you have to be thinking, I only need to take out one stock from Andres, so it's not about who I should put up against Andres, it's who I should put up against who I think Team Gact is going to put in next. So really the counter pick is on in favor of Team Gak right now, and Team Siski just has to try to not bleed out too hard against Andres Seven. Who do you think they're gonna send yeah. in next? What would you do? And uh, I, I was actually thinking about that. I was like trying to do some chess on my mind right now because I was thinking, okay, if they send like Shiny Mark or Sky Day, which I think they have like this clutch factor just because of their characters right now. I mean, they could send uh, MK Leo or Big Boss, but I don't think God would actually want to risk Leo so early. And yeah, T3 Dom, I mean, he, he he's another uh, player that has that clutch factor because of his character. He has that matchup check with uh, Belmont. So yeah, oh, what? Is the captain, what? What, what is happening? They're sending, I think what they're is... sending in, wait, yeah. Why is team, why is Gag? What, what, what is Gag on Team Siski? What is happening right now? Uh, okay. okay. Oh, oh, it's, oh, it's Ken. Ken. Big jokes, they're it's sending good. in Ken. This is a really safe choice. You know, yeah. the Sonic versus Terry yeah. matchup isn't the m easiest matchup for Sonic, but I think Ken, they're confident enough that Ken can take out the one stock from Andres, that it's a very safe choice to pick Sonic against any of the other players on that team. There's no really difficult matchups that Ken would have to deal with from the rest of the pool from Team Gact. So I think that's a great choice, it's a safe choice. You are sending in one of your really strong players early on, but you're not sending in a volatile player early on. You're sending in a very, a very structured pick, and I think that's that's a great choice. Yeah, this is a safe pick right now because it doesn't matter who who Team uh, Gat sends next. Sonic is a character that can really get like the most out of out, out of this interaction because he doesn't have that many losing matchups. I, to my mind, it doesn't cut like anything at all. I mean. He has losing matchups, of course, but out of the characters that I can remember from Team Gat, I think it's one of the safest picks right now. I 100% agree with that. Obviously, you know, Terry isn't the most difficult matchup for Sonic to deal with, but I I don't think that they had really any other choice than their most safe pick. So regardless of whether or not Sonic versus Terry is super winning for Sonic, I think picking Sonic was the right choice against any other character's singular stock. So, like you said, safe pick, and we're seeing that on full display. 70%, one stock, and climbing. Andres has yet to find any damage on Ken. This is kind of just looking like a free closeout. Whoa, and Ken is just doing magic right now. Already has Andres on 125%, and he hasn't even taken any damage. What was that amazing reaction time by, by, by Ken right now? That was actually pretty dangerous, and is it? Wow. He only got 21% Ken with the speed run, like no major glitches and rest Fortnite 100% already. Wow, that was quick. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, geez. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately or fortunately, however you depend to look at it, you don't carry percentage over from player to player. And even if you did, Andres did not get a lot of spare change on that one. So looking like just a full player up again. We're just starting with Ken versus a fresh player as though it's a singles match. It's three stocks versus three stocks, no matter who Team Gact chooses to sub in. So who do you send in versus Ken's safe and oftentimes campy Sonic? I don't know that Ken's gonna necessarily. I, I think I think right now one of the safest picks is not to counterpick the character, but to counterplay the, the counter pick the player. 
So one of the safest cho choices right now could be either Gant or MK Leo. Definitely from matchup experience and from uh, matchup as in player to player matchup experience, who has the most games against Ken? I think you're right. Gakt, obviously, in region or at least in, in na nation for Ken to deal with, or MK Leo, who has played Ken a number of times. It'd be really risky to send in a Belmont against a Sonic, regardless of how well Dom could play the matchup. I think Rob is, is an. It's not super fun, but it would be not, again, the worst thing to send against Sonic, but. Do you want to use your Rob this early when you can have really positive Rob matchups later on in the in this bracket? Um, Nexus on the side of Team Siski plays Falco, and that's also something you have to worry about because oh, yeah. you have a Rob on the side of Team Gak in MK Big Boss, so you want to kind of avoid that matchup. So if you send in Big Boss now to to play the three stock versus three stock matchup and get as many stocks off hand as possible without having to risk too much damage from nexus i don't know that this is tough so yeah and it also not only depends on just the player itself because we remember that well no characters are locked right now right but we don't know what mk leo is going to play or do we that's true no, no we, we don't, don't know he, right? he can play, play whatever he wants uh i would imagine it's going to depend on who, which character he's playing against but if they send in now they're sending a big boss oh yeah, this, this was boss. what i thought it's probably the safe choice to send in a rob versus a sonic here um, cause I, I mean, sending in Gact is not a bad choice, like you said, but Ness has a really, really good matchup against Pikachu. So I think they're trying oh, yeah. to hold Gact for Shiny. Yeah, that sounds like a really, really safe place, actually. I think that's one of the, well, if I remember correctly, I was talking with Shiny Mark and he doesn't, he doesn't think that it's a losing matchup, but it's more of a of a even niche one where you can really lose if you get like janked by all the nest stuff. It, it depends more on the nest player than you. I agree if they play that. the matchup really well, if they, if they play the matchup really well, it's a losing matchup for Pikachu, according to Shiny Mark. I, I agree with that, and Shiny Mark actually played Send at Patchwork 2023 just like a couple of months ago. Uh, actually, it was only just a month ago. That was actually fairly recently. And that looked incredibly close. It went to game five, basically last hit. And even though Shiny Mark didn't take it in the end, it looked like a very, very tough matchup. So speaking to what you mentioned Shiny Mark said, I agree with that 100%, but I still think they're probably holding Gak for Shiny Mark just because yeah. it's a closer matchup than, you know, say Rob versus Yeah, I'm, I'm mainly most of them right now. And yeah, oh, that was so so greedy but my guy right now me papa the big box over there playing with rob with three stocks just representing right now tim gag trying to make the comeback already because remember that they're down one player already three full stocks so they need a comeback factor right now if they want to even things up and this honestly also might have unintentionally been a mental pick to put in Ken this early. You're an entire player up, and you pick a character that is, in a character and player, by the way, that are insanely difficult to force stocks out of because you have to chip them down slowly and fish for an opening. Like, that's the amount of mental strain that it's gonna take for Team Gax to make the recovery against Ken alone. <gasps> what a choice. Oh, what a oh my god! on that air dodge. Wow, and that was actually just because of yeah, meme society, Rob is big. Because he was actually trying to air drift behind Sonic, but since Rob is too big, the hitbox actually got to him. So, yeah, that was an unfortunate... I mean, it was a nice callout by by Ken, nonetheless. Yeah, we, we don't discredit that interaction. But, yeah, that was a misfortune uh, turn of events right now. Yeah, now here's the one benefit that you can talk about with crew battles. The time limit is 99 minutes, and so there's likely not going to be timeout situations you're going to have to deal with. Also, because I, hope I don't so. think that they allow timeouts in crew battles, regardless. Imagine a 99 minutes timeout. I cannot even fathom that. Wow. I mean, it's like when you play with your friends with the 99 timer just to have fun and, and train. That should be almost the same. And Ken is doing wonders right now with that stuck, but I think this is going to be your... Oh, the waiting mix-up! That was Mastery. so good by Ken. That yeah, was that was so good by Ken. What? Yeah, Amazing. great mix-up there. I love that. That was fantastic. 
Then holding onto this stock for dear life, 150%. You usually don't see Rob struggle to kill at this percentage, especially against a character that's on the semi lightweight side, like Sonic. And at 99% on Rob, you're only a couple of reads away from, from losing it there. And yeah, it, not much you can do in terms of fishing out the read there. You can't mash out fast enough to avoid the Rob up smash. And yes, the stocks are evened up in this one game, but a lot of uphill climbing to for MK yeah, right now, the right now Big Boss needs a, a rough stock, basically. So he needs to steal Ken's stock as soon as possible because he's already at 110%. That is not going to be enough to take out Ken's second stock, but that puts him in uh, quite a bit of an uncomfortable position because it makes Big Boss regain control of the stage already. Nice air dodge coming up from Ken right now. And yeah, this, this speed charge is trying to make uh, Big Boss second guess second guess his choices. And I think Big Boss is, is trying to play a, a game of reading with all of these down throws as opposed to you know any other choice of throw or any choice of follow up maybe with up tilt. He's clearly going for these hard reads because he wants to close out stocks early and he knows that an up tilt uh, is not going to true confirm into an up air at certain percentages, especially with a two frame air dodge on Sonic. And look at that, just a call out with a back air and MK Big Boss now has to somehow close out this stock again. What an uphill battle. Yeah, right now, 129% for Ken, and if he manages to close out Big Boss stock without losing his, this could put a lot of advantage on Team Siski right now. So Big Boss needs to be really careful. Yeah, look at this percentage climbing. Ken is in no rush to get close to Big Boss. He's just punishing Big Boss every time that Big Boss goes in for some sort of trade. So Ken's just playing this very cool and measured. No pressure on Ken, no pressure on Team Siski at all. It's going to be a very slow going uh, until Big Boss can find some sort of big opening. Ooh, oh, and he, did he pull it? Yeah, he pulled it off. The Madman. Two stocks, and that puts a big advantage. <laughs> and the little pop up from Ken, that's so cute. And yeah, he puts a big advantage on Team Siskis right now. So now it's, now it's a leap of faith for Team Gak right now. Who are you sending that can actually take the most stocks without losing one or with losing only one stock right now you only have four players left yourself included as the captain and then you have t3 dom mustaine and mk leo who are you sending right now to close out ken's last two stocks uh that's a good question so first of all i think ken is was kind of popping off in a quietly saying how dare you not send leo against me because that's kind of what needs to happen to close out stocks early. However, with Ken only having two stocks left, they might try to go with something safer or something leaving Leo on the back end so that maybe Leo can clean up five, six stocks in a row. I mean, it's a hope and a prayer at the end of the day, but I think I am confused at how this draft went that you let Team Siski somehow end up with, sh with the rest of their players being Shiny Mark, uh, Sky J. Sky J, Meister. Meister, how did this? How did you get there? Yeah, they're sending in Leo. Of course, they're sending in Leo. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how this draft went, um, but Siski clearly got uh, some, some big hitters and putting them on full display right now. Yeah, he, he got the look of straw. Definitely, he got the look of straw. I mean, he got he has a lot of top ten, top twenty players in the world right now. So yeah, it's a pretty broken team. But if there's one man that can pull this off, it is definitely. The one and only, the GOAT, MK Leo himself. Yeah, and I do think that Leo is going to go Pyramithra. I'm not sure if the graphic is assuming it or if they know it, but Pyramithra is the best matchup into Sonic out of all of the characters that Leo plays. And even though a lot of people kind of just beg uh, MK Leo to never play Aegis again, I think it's just the right choice here. And we saw Leo get a lot of practice on that Aegis in the doubles, coming out winning the entire thing, of course, with Big Boss. But is it going to be enough to take out Ken whenever you aren't confident in your character so we'll find out yeah definitely definitely and just yeah just just seeing uh, leo play fire mitra once again it fills my heart because uh, that's one of my main so yeah I, I really love when either him or spargo plays and i know spargo has been playing a lot of cloud lady and hasn't been touching like the aegis so far oh, well no he just sent uh, uh smash factor x if i remember correctly yeah the grand finals were with Aegis. So yeah, there we have it right now. Ken versus the man himself, MK Leo, the best player in the world. 
like, well, we kill. I don't want to argue with that. For me, it's always going to be M. Kelly. I'm, I'm such an M. Kelly fan. But right now, we don't have time to be biased. We have to commentate what's happening right now. And Ken is actually starting to get on the grip right now, 31%. But M. Kelly is just applying so much pressure. He doesn't want to let Ken get as many as much advantage as possible. Yeah, there's no question oh that MKLeo is the GOAT, but the question is, is he a mountain GOAT? Because he's got a big hill to climb to take out Ken, two stocks, and the following characters, three. So let's let's see. I mean, right now he's doing a fantastic job. Getting that percentage racked up, keeping the ledge trap alive, not going for anything too crazy that's going to lose him stage positioning. I mean, this is the classic MKLeo. Keep your advantage state and keep your stage positioning hot, and your opponent never has the chance to read you. They never have the chance to put you in a severe disadvantage, and you have a lot of defensive options that you can just hold in your arsenal, and they'll never be able to condition you. That's the MKLeo Classic, and it's really a matter of can he close out Ken's stock right now. Oh, and, and there we have it. Four side for the win, 72%. Holding the three stocks right now can only has one and this is this could be actually team Gag's opportunity to bring things back to even yeah, One stock and climbing on Ken. That's fantastic to see I wanted to see a closer battle I didn't want to see team Siski just dominate so I'm hoping just for the sake of being able to cast an incredible crew battle that Leo takes this last stock off of Ken without losing one himself it's going to be difficult, though. Oh, great air dodge. Just not getting right on these edge guard scenarios. This is what I was saying before. He spent the entire first stock in advantage, so he never had to show any of his disadvantageous hand. And he's got plenty of options to work with. Down air, back air is going to put Ken in a good position for him right now, but oh, this is looking tight. Yeah, but that was amazing. The eye to the down tilt by Ken right now, avoiding any type of pressure with the upper. And Knight's holding up to the side of the stage, and Ken manages to close out one stock. I know that might not sound like a lot, but just especially right now, the team Siski is with so much advantage. Any stock that you can take from your opponent right now, it's very, very significant because it's just not only the stocks, but it's a weight on their mental right now. Yeah, it wasn't just significant. I honestly think it was required. If every single person that goes against Leo takes one stock off of him, they're going to be back to even by the time that they get to the third character down the line. So that's ultimately a win in the book of Team Siski for, for mentality purposes and for logistics purposes going down the rest of this line of the crew. Yeah. Oh, man, but he, honestly, Ken looks like he wants one more stock. I don't know if Leo's going to let him have it. That was actually pretty dangerous because in their interaction, if Ken had a read, like a really hard read with an F match like that, oh my god, he got it! Oh, did I, did I curse the crew the bottle? Did I, dream. did I curse the crew bottle right now? No, not oh the commentator's curse, the commentator's dream. He called it out and it actually happened. This is, oh, he went for something really hard. He wanted to close that out strong. And Leo losing two stocks here. This is bad. This turned from a really positive situation for Team Gak into a really bad one. Even if he closes out the stock, that's still two that you took off of Leo. It doesn't matter who they send in next. Yeah, that's this is like your dream position right now. Having Leo only with one stock, possibly losing his last stock right now because his Ken is playing like a madman right now. He doesn't want to let his run go by. And uh, there we have it. That was such high percentages. He couldn't survive that. But yeah, Leo with only one stock. Ken is already looking like the MVP of his team. Absolutely, Gat coming in to praise Leo for losing two stocks. Obviously, I'm kidding. He's coming to praise Leo for taking out Ken and say, hey, you got it for the next one. Honestly, Ken holding on to that last stock for so long that Leo was forced to kill with Mithra down tilt up there is really a sight to behold. Are, there, are they gonna send in Sky J? Oh, Siski, uh, this is actually really good. I think that Team Siski sending in Sky J to take out Leo's last stock. Even if Sky J himself loses two stocks in the process, it's it's a good choice, especially against the rest of the characters that are left. And this is, it, it is actually such a smart pick because of Sky J's characters. Because with he can close out Aegis stock at thirty percent. I mean, if he gives um, Leo when with one interaction, or if he goes like goblin mode with with the uh, what was the call? Oh, oh, wait, oh, my mind is having some trouble. What's the name of the thing from, from Incinero? I forgot. Oh, there. 
The revenge. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that was scary. That was scary. I forgot revenge name. I got really scared right now. But yeah, I mean, like I was, I was, I was saying, Sky can go goblin mode right now and just close out Leo's stock almost immediately without losing a stock. But let's see what Leo has under his sleeve. Yeah, I think this is a good choice for a lot of reasons. But what it does allow Team Gag to do is, if Leo can manage to close out one or even hopefully two of Sky J's stocks, it allows Team Gap to send in one of their uh, low, one of their you know characters that maybe doesn't do so well against the Cinemore. At least you know they're not going to have to send in Gak. They might might send in Belmont on T3 Dom. Oh man, that was a great, great edge card. But in any case, that's exactly what Team Siski wants to see. Oh, that was a lot of S spaghetti coming up right there, and MK Leo is doing wonders right now, just trying to close out two stocks, and if he can, three stocks to put things, well, maybe not back to even, but to give his team a little bit more room to breathe. And if Leo gets one more stock out of this, it's a really good position, but... Oh, this is looking really tight. Uh, for both players, they could really die from the next interaction if we get back to the fire up. But Leo is saying, I need to stay on Mithra if I want any chance. <gasps> oh, speed up. What? The jump read into the Alolan whip. That's going to take out Leo's last stock. SkyJ still has two to go. And Team Siski is looking poised to take the rest of this crew battle. That was so, so weird. I mean, I don't know what happened between the last interaction. I just remembered, like, Sky J did a side B, MKLeo jumped, but there was a really bizarre interaction seconds before that could have almost turned the tables around, but nonetheless, well played by Sky J, only losing one stock. They, they're up five stocks already, and they have under the rooster, Meister, Shiny Mark, Siski, and Nexus. So it's looking pretty, pretty hard for the next, for the GAC team. To make a comeback, but remember everything is possible in a smash. And these three remaining players from team, from Team Gag can definitely pull that off. Yeah, I mean we got Terry, we have Belmont, and we have Ness. It's some some really crazy stuff. I wonder if they're gonna send up Gak uh, to because they want to not only close out Sky J's two stocks with some sort of reliability, but they need to have a safer pick no matter what the other team sends in. And Pikachu, I'm not gonna lie to you, does really well against Simon and Richter. So I don't think that they would send in Dom if Shiny Mark takes out Gak. I know we're looking really far down the line, but ultimately I think Shiny Mark would be the next one in if they send up Gak right now to take out the rest of Sky J stocks. I don't know what it's gonna look like though. <laughs> but I do doing, like seeing a Sky J though. The darkest lariat. He's doing the darkest lariat right now, just for the lulls. I mean he's actually coming to El Salvador right now. Shout out to Sky J, he's coming to El Salvador to our Tournament, one of the biggest tournaments in Central America, um, Smash Legends 4. So, yeah, we're going to be having him in October. But, yeah, they're sending Mustaine right now. This is the only other choice. You can't send in Dom into this matchup. Uh, I think I think this they had this or Gak. I don't know how I feel about this. Obviously, Terry can do okay into, into Incineroar, but I don't know what their experience playing against each other is. I think they played like maybe not a lot, but they played definitely played before. So it's going to depend more on if uh, Mustaine can actually get uh, a whole lot of Sky J's rage. Because I mean, even though you have Go on deck, Sky J just in general with rage is such a dangerous character because you can get like like erased from the map with a side B with rage. Absolutely, and look, just look at these lineups, Siski. Team Siski still has Siski, of course, Meister, Shiny Mark, and Nexus, who I have to imagine maybe they'll send a Nexus next just to, you know, hold back on their on their big hitters, maybe just to get some more playtime in. Uh, assuming, of course, Mustaine can take out these stocks onto SkyJ, which is not a guarantee. We know how this type of thing goes. SkyJ has played Riddles a number of times on both Terry and on Kazuya, so he's got some of the matchup knowledge on lock. It's really just a matter of if Mustang can surprise him. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, like you said, Nexus could be like a really a scout, uh, a sc a scouting option right now. Not to discredit Nexus like at all, but it can like, like you said, you can you can hold your your big heads like 
me even further, like even more, so you can just test the other players' reaction against Nexus, and then they're only left with two players. So yeah. yeah I think that's probably a, a good, good mental read right there, Sid. I like that one, but we're getting right into it. Dropping off the side with some darkest lariats for some mental damage. We'll see the friendly taunt come out before we actually get into game and here we go it's gonna be volatile a lot of scrambles and a lot of just hard fighting back and forth Woo! and yeah there you go 59 uh? already double uh? side b this is what i was talking about oh my god <gasps> i was expecting the sky j play over there just running off the stage with a side b and trying to end things as soon as possible Mustaine needs to work really hard on this one if he wants to pull a little bit of breathing room for his team. You're telling me that Mustaine needs to go? I think that's just what he'll do, and he just comes out with a normal burning knuckle. But I'm, you know, just normal stuff is all you need. Oh, but the power guys, that's what he was setting up for, holding back on the go options, getting back to stage, going for yep. what was looking like a ledge trap, but actually wound up being an edge guard with the power geyser. It's traded right back with the Alolan win. Revenge is online for Sky J. And it's really just going to be a matter of if a little bit more damage can come out from Mustaine, take out that revenge. And it looks like it did. So Sky J is resetting this one. 64%. If Mustaine can close this out without losing another stock, it could look promising for Team Gak. Ooh, but those Alolan whips are going to keep trading back. Yeah, and I saw right there that Sky J was actually looking for a Kamikaze back there with the uppers, the chain of uppers. If Mustaine didn't air dodge, he would have gotten the, um, the up B and the stock will have been gotten done for. So nice decision coming up from Mosaic. He definitely is aware of that option. And I think this is going to be it for the Sky J. He ends his run right now. And Mustaine only losing one stock. Okay. Let's see who's the player. Oh, the guy is, is, is like cheering them up. That's, that's a nice captain. That's a that's nice fantastic. captain. That's just keeping the spirit up to, for their teams. Dad captain right there. We love to see it. And that was a great way to close out for Mustaine, too. That was a dominant showing to close out. Not only going for those down tilts, but then following when Sky J SDI'd out, going for more down tilts into the power dunk was just really. Uh, it was a very Sky J way to close out that set. You know, Sky J usually mm -hmm. can close out some sets with crazy reads. It could be DI reads, it could be a jump read. But Mustaine turned it right back around and said, I can take two of your stocks and you can only take one of mine. Who's the better player now? <laughs> and Siski says, I am. So we're going to have three stocks of Siski's Samus against two stocks of Mustaine's Terry. And I got to tell you, I'm not sure if I'm looking forward to watching this one. Yeah, let's see if the captain has what it takes right now. I mean, of course he does. He's one of the best players in Europe right now. I, I think it's his top two. So yeah, Siski, the best Samus in the world versus Mustaine, one of the best Terrys in Mexico. This lineup is still looking rough. I mean, Meister Shiny Mark Nexus versus Gak T3 Dom at the back end of these two characters that are and players that are currently showing as featured. I, I, I'm scared. I'm scared for Team Gak. I want them to make a big turnaround. And yes, Ness does really well against some of these remaining characters on the screen, but it's still a lot to ask of Gak to take four plus stocks just to even it back up. So. What can Mustaine do? What can Terry do with your fairly slow ground speed and your fairly slow air speed to close the gap onto Samus when Burning Knuckle and Crack Shoot and all of your other options to gap close are all low enough to the ground to get stopped by a mini charge? Yeah, against one of the best like zoners in the game. So it's going to be a pretty, pretty difficult matchup right now for Mustaine, but I mean, we have go. So yeah, if there's like all of these characters that has that has some type of meter can definitely clutch stocks really, really well. So let's see what is going to be Mustaine's game plan because that's that's really, really important right now. How are you planning on approaching and closing out the stocks? And and one thing that is really funny about Samus is that you're always dealing with that rock, paper, scissor interaction where if you bait the up B from Samus. You, you need to guess once again if he's going to land on the platform or is it going to pass fall or is it going to land below the platform so yeah it's a pretty difficult thing to deal with but let's see we're going to pokemon stadium 2 and remember pokemon stadium 2 makes the best games 
I agree, and I think that the Samus versus Dark, Dark Samus choice is intentional here. Having your charge shot be a little bit higher up is much better to deal with a Terry who, yes, are, does have trouble snapping to ledge, but what you're really covering more options of is crash shoots and burning knuckles. That Obviously, the burning knuckle is going to get hit either way, but crack shoot could go over a mini Dark Samus charge shot, but it's not going over a regular Samus mini charge shot. So. Good tactical choice from Siski. Came out with a video very recently talking about the differences between Samus and Dark Samus. That's fantastic. But just as quickly as I finished that sentence, Mustaine finished the first stock on Siski. Great combo and the power dunk to take the stock. This this it makes it a little bit like more uh, bearable for the next team, for the next player right now because you only have to deal with two Samus stocks already and there we have it once again the bread and butter from Terry 61% 1% away from go and things can really go south if Siski doesn't close out this stock as soon as possible yeah tell me why Mustaine looks really comfortable in this matchup I, I don't know what yeah. kind of experience he has with this but he's looking like he knows it I'm trying I'm trying to to think like which player he has been practicing with for this matchup because he like, like you're telling me wow already two stocks did even if he loses this this has taken a lot of the mental weight and a lot of the pressure for the next player uh, absolutely yeah down tilt down tilt burner knuckle and down tilt down tilt power dunk has been great combo for oh! the same oh he turned himself around I'm not sure if it was on purpose with the power geyser that avoided him getting hit by the the screw attack and 167% and go is a lot of rage. You could probably just get like 70% off of a couple of really good interactions, ah, but you're gonna lose your stock there. So really it's just a matter of can you climb it back up and you close out Siski's stock before you lose your own. That would be super clutch Team Gax. That would be really, really the clutch, the, the hope, the spark of hope that they needed so bad right now. And that missile just Clanking with the side B from Terry, 37% already, and the Paris has been really, really crisp by Mustaine right now, 78%. And yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm trying to think, where did he get this practice? He looks so comfortable in this matchup right now. Yeah, this is a really close situation. The rising tackle putting Samus at 106%. At edge, that's a burning knuckle kill for sure, and a power dunk is not far off. Oh my God, speaking Ooh. of power dunk, devil. 94% on Terry, you still don't have go online, but you have a lot of other options to close out the stock, and Mustaine is putting in a lot of pressure. Oh! Went through a read, the dash attack just misses. Oh, but the down throw, Siski now has stage advantage. Charge shot is almost fully charged. Andres has, or excuse me, Mustaine has to find a way back down, gets hit by the charge shot. With go online and a ton of rage, you can close out the stock with just about anything, but that requires you to get back to stage. However, this... the charge shot's gonna take it. Wow. This was your World Cup right there. If Mustaine managed to pull that off, he would have been the Leo Messi of his team, just making it even close. And there we have it. Mustaine is out. Only two players remaining on Team Gag. The captain himself and T3 Dom. And on the other side, we still have, well, we still have Siski with one stock. We have Shiny Mark. We have Meister and Nexus, so it's looking pretty, pretty tough, if you ask me. Absolutely, but big props to Mustaine for how well he did in that. I mean, that, that's about as good as you could have asked for for any of the players on your current team, on your current roster, to do against Siski. Taking off those two stocks, bring it to a very last hit scenario whenever you only started with two stocks yourself. I, incredible showing. And honestly, I, I can't be too certain, but that might have been a Samus versus Dark Samus difference. Uh, Mustaine was very high up to get hit by that full charge charge shot, but Siski sent it, and if that missed, I mean, Mustaine could have made it right back and gone for some sort of hard punish, possibly down tilt, down tilt, rising tackle, or down tilt into burning knuckle. I mean, there would have been a lot of options, even from the opposite side of the stage, to take that out. So that was a really last moment scenario, really, going either way, but props to Siski, keeping his team afloat and keeping that lead high. Uh, Dom's coming there in. There we have it. T3 Dom just walking in right now. The rich, the Bet the Belmont player. So let's see if if he can close this out. I'm calling it right now. The next player that's coming, it's definitely either Meister or Shiny Mark, because of the matchup check. Absolutely. I, again, they they still if they really want to win this crew battle, they'll do what you're saying. Send in Meister or Shiny Mark. But if they're wanting to get all of their players to have some experience. 
then they'll send in Nexus's Falcon. <laughs> we'll see either way. They might they might just want to have all of their players get some experience in here, but of course with Gax still on the back end, you can't you can't play it too too safe or too too risky. Right? You probably don't want to play it too too safe, but you don't want to play it too risky either. So P3 Dom coming out, six stocks left between Dom and Gax against the nine stocks from the rest of Team Siski plus one for Siski himself. Imagine if Gax can pull pull this off. Like, wow. I have somebody asking, what's the difference between the Belmont, between Simon and Richter? It's kind of a big difference. Uh, you gotta really notice the subtleties between the di differences between the characters, but uh, one of their holy waters is blue and one of them is red, and that can be the difference between a win and a loss. Yeah, definitely. So right now, let's see. Which is going to be the stage? The stage is actually like really important for the Belmonts. If mm. you're playing on a triplat right now, they can definitely benefit Belmont right now. Yeah, I'm wondering if we're taking just a moment break, uh, but I would love to show everybody the drawing that I made for Draft Cruise. I'm super excited that we get to commentate the Draft Cruise. It's been a fantastic ride so far. We've got a lot more crews to play, of course, with so many players left on the board, but uh, ultimately I had time to draw. To me. I love it. I'm getting better at my art skills from having the whiteboard at commentary events. Yeah, that, that, that looks like a pretty good, like, side skill. Like, okay, I'm commentating right now. I'm going to draw something right now. And you get better and better every time you commentate. You're going to be like the next Picasso by the next five <laughs> events you commentate. One can hope. One can hope. Okay, three stocks on Dom versus one stock on Siski. Siski's really putting the pressure on Dom, though. Yeah, I'm just applying so much pressure already. 57% versus 42. But this is what I'm talking about, the matchup check. I mean, you can get, like, maybe not a lot of, but Samus is more like a common matchup where you can practice. But how many Belmonts are out there that you can really, really have really good practice against? Tell yeah, me. not a lot. Definitely not a lot at Dom's level, for sure. So, Siski might get a little bit matchup check here. And I think Dom is going to fish for some of the stuff that Siski isn't prepared to look for. This lead trapping... The Belmonts have some of the best in the game, even matching that of Samus. Oh, but dropping from ledge and air dodge missing. Ah, oh, it's not a great SD from Siski. Even with a full player up, that they might kick themselves for that one later. Yeah, and I, I really, really like. Wow, that is so wholesome. Gat has been like con congratulating each of the players every time they win a set. That's so wholesome, right there. I love to see that. Absolutely. He's really saving himself for the end, too. Team Siski's leader already out of the game. Not to say that they don't have some strong players on the back, but Meister and Shiny Mark are forces that I think you can send either one of those against Dom, and, and Dom's going to... Uh, Dom has had some big comebacks. We've seen Dom do incredible at different events, Summits included, but against those tough matchups, against two of the best representatives of the characters of those tough matchups... Uh, I, I would love to see Dom do well, but that that's a lot to ask. That seems pretty, pretty difficult, and there, there we have it. Tiny mark on the board. Mi papa. Mi papa de Guatemala over there. There we have it, representing Centro America. Mm -hmm. Shiny mark, the best Pikachu in the world against Kitri Dom, the best creature in the world. Yeah, we've got people from all over the place, from different representatives and of NA. We have some US players like Dom. We have some Guatemalan players like Shiny Mark. Of course, we've got some hometown Mexican heroes. And we've got people coming from across the ponds as well with our French representation, our Japanese representation, and more. People from all over the world coming out to Delfino Maza, one of the best events of the year, arguably the greatest event in Mexico of the year. Uh, if you were able to make it out to Delfina Maza, I'm sure you're having a fantastic time by the beach. And if you're just watching on the stream, I know you're having a fantastic time with us because these sets are great. Yeah, these sets have, has been amazing. And to all the people that are there, like actually in the venue, I'm so jealous of you, right? Like you have no idea how bad we want to be there. So please enjoy it to the fullest. And all of you on the stream, please enjoy the rest of the match right now. We're trying to deliver the best commentary as possible for this amazing sets and yeah and definitely i haven't been to uh, delfino massa before but all of my friends that have been to one they tell me it's one of the best experiences you can have both with the smash and the beach so if you have the opportunity to go next year definitely take it and go to delfino massa 
I know that I'm going to try to make it out next year for sure. We've got yeah, me too. two players versus three players, and this is looking not as big of a lead as we thought. Yeah, it's a full player, and yes, it's three stocks, and yes, you have strong players on the side of Team Siski, but three stocks is, is closer than people would like to have you believe. It's only going to take Gact or Dom to close out an additional two stocks to really make it come close to the wire, and I don't think that's a tall ask, especially if somebody like Gact yeah this is going to be pretty tough and and, and and i i call i call it like remember i said if they send like t3 dom right now they're definitely sending shiny mark like next next to, to each other so yeah there we have a shiny mark right there representing guatemala and just to answer uh, uh, a question that was asked in the chat is masa spanish for plaza no masa it's like the short for mazatlan where is where the tournament is being held right now mazatlan it's a state of Mexico, so well, it's not a state of Mexico. It's a, a beach. It's a place from Mexico. So yeah, you understand me, please. Please don't don't get mad at me. I'm, I'm not good at Mexican geography right now. I'm not from Mexico, so yeah. But it's short for Mazatlan. Masa is short for Mazatlan. Hey, you had more information than I did. But getting right into it, uh, Dom has already put 67% on Shiny Mark, which is impressive to say the least. But getting back to stage against Pikachu as one of the Belmonts that have. Terrible recovery options. Dom making it back and almost resetting neutral is a feat in and of itself. But Shiny Mark says, You don't have neutral back yet. This is still my advantage oh. state, and I'm taking your stock. That's a stock up, and now it's nine to five. Yeah, 86% already for T3 Dom Shiny Mark. Remember that Team Siski has the lead with nine stocks versus five on Team Gag side. And I just love when Shiny Mark and Pikachu does that, they get under the stage and they just start trying to mess with you because you don't know where they're going to end up. So it's pretty cool to see that every time. But G3 Dom has been actually just keeping Shiny Mark at bay with that those edge cards. But there we have it, the loops over there, the quick bread and butter conversion. And is it going to be enough to take out Belmont Stuck? It is! Oh it is. my and god. Shiny Mark not even losing his own. It was 9 to 5, and Shiny Mark said, Time for me to put in the work. Now we're at 9 to 4 and climbing. Dom's got a lot of ground to recover. You gotta take no. one stock off of Shiny Mark. You can't leave nine stocks for Gak to deal with. Imagine, just imagine if somehow Chichi Dom loses the stock right now, and somehow Gak manages to pull nine stock. Oh my God, no! Did, did I curse? The, oh my God, I've been cursing everyone during my whole commentary block. I feel so bad right now. What? Am I Nostradamus or something? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, unlucky. Dom, not taking one stock off of Shiny Mark, and uh, Shiny Mark got three fresh stocks now going into the final matchup against Gact. No question about it. This is going to be a hot set. Ness versus Pikachu can go one of two ways, in my opinion. Either the entire set is played off stage, like we saw in Send versus Shiny Mark's early games at Patchwork, or you can get towards a more middle ground where both of these characters are trying to hold stage positioning and just chip their opponents down into oblivion. So is it going to be a chip type of game or a hype offstage kind of game? I always hope for the latter. There we have it. This is like like uh, that anime, uh, what's the name? Um, Ragnarok, Record of Ragnarok. Yeah, so there we have it. The players representing there. Now we have the captain itself, Gagged, against Shiny Mark. So let's see who is going to take this. If this is going to be a really dominating win by Tim Siski, or if Gagged if Gag has what it takes to pull a nine stock right there and make things even. Maybe if he doesn't like win the, the match, but just making it to the last three stocks. That will be so huge. Yeah, it's going to be wild. And Smashville is the exact type of stage I imagine that they were going to go to. The other two, the other stages that you might have seen obviously being banned because they're too volatile in favor of one or the other. So Smashville being a very interesting one because whoever has stage position, you got to just keep tossing out options. Neither of these characters has a great way to deal with somebody under a platform so they're just choosing to play the most volatile way possible and say if i have stage position you just can't do anything so 
If you're a disadvantage, you're probably going to try to force your opponent away from center, and if you're an advantage, you're going to try to hold center. And right now, they're both battling for that center. Oh, yeah. Down air. Ooh. Uh, down air, but nice EIE yeah, coming out from Gax for avoiding the spike. 97%. And a great awareness from Gak. Because I, I, I myself would have just pressed air dodge in that situation, but yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why he is the captain already. One hundred and five percent versus fifty against Shiny Mark. This is where things can get tricky for Pikachu. But amazing recovery from Shiny Mark's part. Yeah, but you can't start off a nine stock with one hundred and twenty percent on your character in climbing. You've got to make some more. You know, risky decisions. If you want to close out stocks quickly and have a chance to bring back this nine stock, you cannot play safe. And I think that if you want to be Pikachu, you kind of have to play safe. So it's really a, a catch twenty two for Gak right now. Yeah, and even Shiny Mark can just like go Goblin mode right now. He is there. His team is nine stocks up, six stocks. I mean, so yeah, he could definitely go Goblin mode right now. And there we have it, the attempt of Edge Garden trying to guess where Shiny Mark is going to land. And the backer, two stocks left. But remember that Pikachu has a kill throw and Gak is already at 150%. Yes, but 150% also Ooh! means rage. And whenever you're playing Ness versus Pikachu, you might struggle to rack up some damage quickly. All it's going to take is one or two solid combos to put Pikachu in kill percentage. And you can see that Gak is fishing for some openings with the PSI Magnets. He's trying to get some quick PSI Magnet combos, but it's not nothing doing there. Because making those combos happen on Pikachu is difficult as is with how small that character is. And of course, with Shiny Mark, who understands how to play the matchup, it's going to be even harder. And now it's two stocks to two stocks, almost fresh. Let's ignore the fact that there are two full players behind Shiny Mark. Gak's got to get through Shiny Mark first. Yeah, definitely he needs to get behind this powerful uh, wall as Shiny Mark is. I mean, it's not only the character, like, Pikachu is one of the best characters in the game, but Shiny Mark being the best Pikachu in the world, that makes things very difficult. But Gak is actually working right now, just healing himself with the Joel 68 for Shiny Mark. So this can be really, really good for Gak. Yeah, this is... This is a really good way to start off your second stock as Gak right now. Uh, can you hold it though? That's the real question. Shiny Mark knows how to come back from this type of situation. He's done it many times before. He's done it before recently on this same stage against the same character. So I, I don't count Shiny Mark out by any means whatsoever. It's really about Gak has the onus to take the stock before Shiny Mark can turn it back around. And closing it out has seemed to be a struggle for Gak so far. Yeah, definitely 100 but 103 percent already and if shiny mark keeps spamming the t-jewels he can reheal himself as many times as he wants so that can really work for him for for him right now but i'm pretty sure shiny mark is going to try to avoid as much as possible using the yours right now and there we have it got closing out shiny mark second stock 82 percent there's hope over there and it, you know what they say if there is a way, if there's a will, there's a way, and Gak is definitely working with something right now. Yeah, Shiny Mark has a lot of pride right now. He wants to close out Gak himself. He doesn't want to lose anything to Gak, even if he can take one more stock. That's not going to be enough for Shiny Mark. Although he is going to try to close out that stock, but if Gak can kill Shiny Mark before he loses that second stock, there's a chance. There's a real honest chance. Ah, but that's Ooh. not how you want to go into it. Air Dodge SD is the saddest thing that you can see at the end of a crew battle. Yeah, and this is where Shiny Mike can just go super goblin mode. Oh, we're having a little bit of production issues right now, but it's looking like Shiny Mark is applying so much pressure on Gak right now already. And 70%, this is the last stock for Team Gak. Can he pull this up? Can he face another opponent before oh. going to the Shadow Realm and he survives? What a quick DI thinking from Gak, but oh, dude, I, he actually killed him. Wow, that was incredible. Angling the PK Thunder recovery to hit Shiny Mark on the come down. That's the same thing that actually happened in the Shiny Mark versus Send matchup. It, that's something that can really mess you up if you are in untackable percentages. And that's where Shiny Mark was in that untackable percentage. So even if he was able to react to that, Gak decided to make a calculated risk, which is exactly what Gak needs to make this comeback, now one stock versus six, they're just sending Meister, and they said, Nexus, you don't even get to play. So, 
Uh, I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna work out. Game and Watch versus Nest doesn't doesn't sound like you know. Yeah, it sounds one of pretty. Them, you know. Uh, it sounds pretty, pretty difficult for Ness right now, but yeah, I mean, it lose, I mean, hope is the last thing you can lose, so yeah, there we have it. Gak versus Meister, one stock versus six. Can Gak pull the miracle over here? Team Siski's pulling no, and Siski himself, pulling no punches whatsoever. God forbid I wanted to see some Falco gameplay today, but Siski says, no, we're taking this seriously and we're closing this out strong. So, you know, to each their own, you have some captains like Team Siski. Siski's gonna, you know, pick the best draft and, and try to hammer your opponents into the ground before they have a chance to come back with any of the players. But then you have the team captain like Gact, who's very supportive, comes up and hugs all of the players after their sets saves himself for the very end to ensure that all of the other players get a chance to play, and then tries to make a miracle comeback like the father figure that he has shown himself to be in this crew battle. So, can he make the 1v6 miracle? It's a dream, but I hope the dreams come true. Yeah, but the way I see it is, um, Steam Siski might have won, or may, might won the, the crew battle, but Gag teams won a family because of the Hawks. So yeah, there we have it. Who is the real winner over here? The one who got the prize or the one who got the family and the bonding with all of the Gax Hogs? And, oh, I was... Actually, I got distracted for a moment, but we have a Sora instead of Meister's usual Game & Watch. Let's see if this can be the thing that pulls the miracle. Why not, right? Your six stocks up. Why not throw the Sora in there? Maybe this is Meister's way of getting some top-level practice to bring this into bracket tomorrow. Maybe he's just doing it for fun. Either way, I'm kind of happy that we get to see Sora over game. Someone please wake up the Sora stat the Twitter account. Because <laughs> we're, we're definitely going to be having some tweets over there. 91% versus 73. Three stuck against one. This looks pretty, pretty difficult already at 91%. Oh. No! Was, the, was this enough? It was not enough 113 percent let's see how those guys get back to the stage and he manages to recover once again 170 percent but oh my god amazing conversion by guy 113 percent this looks hard this is hard but it can be pulled off right now 22 percent and just with the juggling with those uppers trying to apply as much pressure as possible he won't let meister land he's just keeping him at bay right now and it's working for gag oh my god oh my god 85 percent and climbing for the second stock oh but unfortunately the up air re call out is going to take gag's final stock the crew battle is over team siski takes it with a commanding Five stock advantage. Five stock over Tim's Gag. That was a really, really dominating crew battle by Siski. I, I, I'm actually wondering how did the draft go? Like, how did you manage to pull like five smash gods by yourself? Like, what did you do? What kind of magic did you do to pull that off? I, I have honestly no idea. When you wind up getting Glutiny, the best player in Europe. Uh, Siski, I guess also in contention for the best player in Europe, is the captain, but you already have those two. Then you have Beister, who plays a character that the other team is gonna have a lot of bad matchups against because Game & Watch, even though Meister chose to go Sora. You have SkyJ, the comeback and upset king. Then you have Ken, one of the best Sonics in the world. Sonic is incredibly difficult to deal with. Shiny Mark, arguably the best Pikachu in the world right now. How did you manage to get all six of those while your opponents got Leo and Big Boss and Andres? Yes, but then you have, you know, Anki, T3 Dom, and Mustaine, who are great players in their own right, but I'm trying to figure out who you selected in those lists that would have outshined, to say, like a Meister or a Ken that might have still been on the board. So I, no, no shade to any of the players. Everybody is fantastic, but you got to wonder how that draft went for Gact. Yeah, uh, definitely no shade, but uh, I'm just laughing a little bit because the way I see it and the way I imagine it, it did went, was it like when you're playing against an, uh, a, a player that you don't know 
and he starts like styling, watching his phone, and just selecting the music, waiting for you to pick your character so he can pick his character. To me, it looks like wait, look, okay, you pick um, uh, Tidri Dom. Oh, I want Shiny Mark. Oh, you pick Big Boss. Oh, I want Ken. So it looks <laughs> that way to me. And imagine if it go if it did go that way, that would be so funny. It did kind of look like a one-to-one. -one. You pick this person, I'm going to pick a counter. You pick this person, I'm going to pick a counter. So I'm really not sure who had the first pick between Gact and Siski. At this point, it doesn't really matter. I'm sure that they did some of it live. Uh, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. It would have been on the mainstream. Either way, Siski clearly came out with a draft lead, and it showed in execution as well. All the players played fantastic from both sides, but Team Siski showed why they have the higher-ranked PR players. So. Speaking of ranked on the PR Rewired Fest, free attendance, but still worth PR points. You guys exactly. should try to make it out October 6th to the 7th. That's still within the season, I believe. Uh, and in University of Arkansas, sure, $25,000 in prizing for free attendance. You can't really ask for something better than that. And I know that we have a lot of really awesome players going. I believe Spargo is confirmed to be going to that as well. So if you want to go out, maybe meet Spargo, maybe even have a chance to play against him, Rewired Fest might be the place for it. Yeah, they're only, they're only having uh, Smash Factor. It's Smash Factor. They're only having Smash where they have Smash Factor shit. And there we have it. Rise and Grind, which actually... Looks like your audio cut out just a little bit there, Sid. So I'll take over where you were just talking about Rise and Grind. They're going to have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. They're going to have Super Smash Bros. Melee, Guilty Gear Strive, and Street Fighter Six. Highly recommend you guys try to make it out to Waco, Texas. It's a great city. A lot of uh, fun activities to do there. I believe it's a little bit of a college town as well. But... October 13th to the 15th is when Rise and Grind is. There's going to be 400 setups at Rise and Grind. Obviously, a lot are going to be used for friendlies so, or money matches, depending on what you like. I know there's been a lot of debate about that lately. I want some friendlies in myself. Some people want money matches. In any case, you'll have plenty of opportunities to do that at Rise and Grind with 400 setups. So get signed up today. We've got plenty of time. And of course, if you aren't already, like, follow, and subscribe to VG Bootcamp. I know that there's been some technical issues today. It's not on the side of VG Bootcamp or the production side running VG Bootcamp today. Unfortunately, there's just a little bit of feed issues coming from Delfino Maza over in Mazatlan. Uh, sending that feed over to VG Bootcamp has been a little bit of an issue. So unfortunately, some technical issues outside of the control of both of these production companies. So in any case, everybody knows what VG Bootcamp normally does and it's worth a like, follow, and a subscribe. And if you needed more incentive, there are some wonderful emotes on the screen for you that you can use in chat today, tomorrow, and Sunday. If you subscribe, free with Twitch Prime, by the way, but also as low as four ninety nine dollars a month. Go ahead and sub to VG Bootcamp. They've done so much for the scene, so much for the community. They've been around for over a decade now. And of course, Gimmer and Apostle, always putting in amazing work and showing why VG Bootcamp is one of the longest standing and most consistently standing Twitch streams and YouTube channels for not only locals, but regionals, majors, super majors, and so on. Definitely get subscribed to VG Bootcamp today. Overall, that was an amazing crew battle. I'm trying to get Sid back on the mic right now. I'd love to talk to him a little bit, hopefully before we close out. But in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed that. There was a lot of huge players in that crew battle ken i believe taking five stocks starting that off really strong making team gak struggle to come back and they really never made that comeback right at that five stock advantage that was really tough now i was incredibly impressed on the side of team gak with mustaine doing awesome work taking out sky j with some commanding fashion and and continuing that role into his next set i mean it, it was fantastic stuff from mustaine as well a lot of players that you may or may not have heard of and they are showing yeah. up big here at delfino maza i think and i think i'm back, back with us. yes yeah sorry 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 i left you alone for a little bit but yeah there we have it i think uh we need to say goodbye right now it has been an absolute blast for us to be here with you it was an absolute blast to commentate with you i had so much fun i was actually preparing myself in case i didn't get my <laughs> audio back so yeah i was just uh kind of having an emergency backup over there but yeah thanks god we I, I got to fix it but yeah i hope all of you in the chat enjoyed this amazing rebuttal in your commentary and where can they find you my dear kevin uh, my name is kevin with a k you can find me at kevin with a k underscore on most social medias definitely at twitter and what about you sid yeah, if you want to follow me, you can 
give me a follow and at SIDX double underscore CDX double underscore so you can find me on X. Yeah. Uh, Thank no you guys virtual, so much. Yeah, Twitter, X so yeah. Twitter. Uh, yikes on that one. But in any case, we'll see you guys over the next two days, Saturday and Sunday. We have our singles brackets. Uh, it's going to be incredible. We have a lot of the top representatives from around the world. It is still a huge major here in Mazatlan, Mexico. So tune in. We're going to have a lot better stream for you guys tomorrow and Sunday. So we'll see you then.